In 1798, the zoologists of the British Museum in London met to examine the skin of an extraordinary animal which had been sent to them from New South Wales by a colonist called Dawson. That animal was completely different from anything they had ever seen before. Its fur was like that of an otter, it had webbed feet like a duck, a flat tail like a beaver, and in place of a mouth, a duck's bill. Those experts declared Dawson's animal to be an elaborate hoax, but in reality, it was just one example of an entirely different wildlife. Millions of years of isolation had made it possible for a process of parallel evolution to take place in Australia. Ancient groups of mammals who had tried their luck in the fight for survival had almost entirely disappeared from the other continents. While alone on this enormous island in the southern hemisphere, they were able to diversify far away from their better equipped competitors. Australia separated from the rest of the world and became a gigantic Noah's Ark where those original inhabitants of Gondwana, the supercontinent which contained all the lands of the southern hemisphere, were able to prosper. Here life evolved along different lines, and the continent of Australia became home to unique zoological species. The fish experimented with lungs, the birds grew to almost two meters, the trees became fire resistant, and the mammals laid eggs. The story of the inhabitants of this Terra Australis can be traced back to the distant days when all the continents of the Southern Hemisphere were one. Dense rainforests covered the edges of the supercontinent Gondwana. The world was then a warmer and more humid place in which enormous dinosaurs ruled over a zoology in permanent evolution. But alongside the enormous prehistoric dragons, protected within the jungles, lived other smaller and more recent creatures, waiting for the climatic changes which would prove to be an insuperable obstacle for the powerful lizards. The remains of that universal jungle can still be seen in the northeast of Australia and are now home to the descendants of the long extinct dinosaurs. The birds are the most numerous species in this green, suffocatingly humid world. Their ability to fly meant that they were not condemned to isolation like the land creatures of Australia, and competition with the species from the rest of the world produced new types of bird, which then came to these Jurassic forests and stayed forever. Here there were no large predators and food was plentiful. So many species of birds became part of the history of this independent evolution, giving rise to extraordinary creatures. The cassowary is one of the heirs to the gigantic birds which inhabited the jungles of Gondwana. Those common ancestors evolved into the ostriches in Africa, the rares in South America, and the emus and cassowaries in Oceania. The common cassowary measures almost 2 meters and weighs around 60 kilos. A giant in terms of present-day birds, but a mere lightweight when compared to its close relative, the moas. Both moas and cassowaries were descended from a common ancestor, and the moas inhabited New Zealand until the arrival of the Maoris in 1350. They measured almost 4 meters and weighed 250 kilos. 
But even they had a bigger brother, the elephant bird, weighing 500 kilos. Yet another of the children of Gondwana, when the supercontinent split apart, it survived only in Madagascar and eventually died out. Despite its appearance, the cassowary is a relatively recent bird. It is believed that it only separated from its primitive ancestor around 10,000 years ago. On the other hand, other more normal-looking birds are among the oldest inhabitants of these Australian jungles, the mound builders, a group of birds which were the first to become separated from the main branch of ornithological evolution. The Australian brush turkey is the most representative example of the Australian mound builders. The males build nests, which can be up to a metre high, by collecting together up to four tonnes of vegetable material. Tiny fungi live among the dead leaves, decomposing them and releasing heat as they breathe. In this way, the nest becomes a gigantic incubator. In it, a number of females lay their eggs and the male will look after them, making sure that the temperature of the nest remains constant. It is believed that somewhere on their tongues or beaks, the brush turkeys must have areas which are extremely sensitive to heat. And so, during incubation, they plunge their heads down into the leaves and check that the temperature remains between 30 and 35 degrees centigrade. The system, which you might think is a recent original innovation, is in fact the demonstration accepted by many scientists as proof of just how closely the mound builders are in evolutionary terms to the reptiles. For only reptiles and the group of brush turkeys use this particular and effective system of incubation.